let's see here. Okay. Oh, look at that. Got my YouTube 100,000 subscriber right up there. <clears throat> okay. Let's let some people show up. I know it's like midday on a Monday, so I don't know how many people we're going to get here, but we'll give it a minute. Let's do that. Okay. So, ah, some people are starting to show up. Good afternoon, Robin, Beth Lukens. Happy New Year. Becky H., Happy New Year. Susan Eckstein, Happy New Year. Everybody's showing up. Julie, Amy James, Julie showing back. Jennifer Martinez. Oh, there we go. Now they're jumping up. <laughs> I don't think I don't think white's a very good color on me, actually. I look a little washed out. <laughs> um, but that's what happens sometimes. So I'm just letting some people show up here and uh, happy new year to everybody. I know it's been a little while since I've done a live and I oh the studying. <laughs> so I chose to not do one big test. I chose to do it's like three years. I think it's 25 or 30 questions um, every quarter, it's four times a year. So it's going to draw it out, but it should be, it's like taking smaller bites. We'll see how it goes. I kind of think I should have just studied really hard and taken one big uh, test, but what are you going to do? This is new. They're offering it. So I was going to try it and it's, it's interactive. It's kind of cool. It's all online. Um, so we'll see how it goes, but I wanted to, um, um, uh, I wanted to talk about a couple things. I haven't really talked about my, uh, my poker and going to, to the win encore for the world poker tours main event. I had talked about it on here and there was a lot of questions. Um, so I, uh, I, I just wanted to give you guys an update cause you guys are the, my top fans on Mr. Pops Alive. So I went and I did this on uh, money that I had won going to my dermatology conference. So each year I go out there and I have a couple hours at the end of one day and I play and I've won two to three grand like every time I go since 2014. So I had a little nest egg that's just poker money and I took that out there and I, I did play one of the... Um, one of the satellites and I won, I, and I put the little ticket on there. Um, uh, I won the $10,400 buy-in by making the top like 38 people beating 1200 people to get that. So, uh, my whole goal, I, this has been something I've, oh, I played poker for a long time. I used to play online when I was studying and, um, I, I know some people don't care about this, but the ones who do, I just wanted to do a little update on it. I, um, I wanted to see how I would do against the best in the world because I played a lot and I played in a lot of different circumstances. I played cash games and I play and I, I do well and uh, I haven't lost money on it. Um, I've been, uh, I've been ahead, you know, for years, not, I don't play real high stakes though, which is smart, <laughs> but I, uh, you know, I had a little tiny nest egg and I was like, you know what? I want to try and pay it forward. And, um, what I did, I did well. I played a lot of hands and I beat the 1200 people on Sunday. And then I went into the main event and I did well there. I ended up beating 20, uh, tw almost 2,600 out of the 3000 that were there. I missed the money by 40 or 50 spots. So that was kind of a bummer, but one thing I didn't anticipate and this real, I, I uh, try to anticipate most things is the, overstimulation of, of sitting for 12 to 13 hours and having to think at very high levels against the best people in the world. And that overstimulation causing me to not be able to sleep. And I have never, I've never had this happen where I literally would lay down, fall asleep for two hours and wake up. Like it was like 1230 to 2:30 or three, I would wake up and just stare at the ceiling for five hours. I'd try to go out and sleep. And this happened Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, by the fourth day, I was almost delirious. And I noticed that these other people, they had stimulants that were keeping them up. And then they had downers that were putting them down. And I was like, wow, I didn't even think about that. Um, like bringing melatonin or some type of sleep aid, which I don't ever need to use. So I didn't. But man, was that a blind side? Because, you know, when I went out on at the very end of day two, there was only 30 minutes left of that day. And all I had to do was fold for that 30 minutes and about 40 minutes the next day. And I would have been in the money 
and that would have started at, at least twenty thousand dollar winnings. So that was kind of a bummer. Um, and you know, I had almost five hundred thousand chips when I went out. I got pulled into a hand I didn't need to be put in. And my my strategy was to play a lot early, build up a nice bank of chips, and then when I get close to the money, just fold everything, get there, and then play your game. And my fatigue. I believe kind of, you know, I had a good, I had a great hand that I was in and somebody really sucked out like a 4% card, which is what took most of my chips. So, um, that, uh, you know, that's, that's what happens. <laughs> that's part of the game, but I shouldn't have really been, I didn't need to be in the hand, but for those of you who are into poker, a lot of people had questions. That's, that's what happened. Um, you know, uh, there's, there's plenty more, there's plenty more games in, in the years to come, but it was, uh, it was really fun. It answered the question. I could hang with the best in the world. I really enjoyed the poker part. When I started losing sleep, it became not as fun, but we can, uh, we can get around that next time. So let's go back to, uh, I have a new setup. I don't know if you can see, I got, we, uh, we got a double desk, my wife and I, cause we always have one desk. And when I wanted to do lives, I kind of have to pull something, push her stuff to the side. And, uh, we, we built a new desk and this weekend off. Um, so we, uh, I'll, I'll post a picture at one point, but it's kind of nice because we have both of our screens and now we, I have room. I can keep up my live set up, um, for when I need it, which is kind of fun. So, uh, let's talk about this giant cyst, um, ruptured cyst abscess. So, uh, yeah, play sit and go. I hear you. <laughs> I know. It's uh, the, the big tournaments, they are, they call it a grind, man, uh, it is no joke. 12 hours, just overstimulation, but you know, I, I, am a patient person, so I, I'm ready for it next time. So let's talk about this giant abscess. I had a lot of people saying a lot of things, um, good and bad. And I, I, there's a lot of people on my channel, but I don't think they're my regulars. And I, I definitely don't think they're the people that are Mr. Pops at live, but they say, oh, he butchered that. He didn't even get the sack out. And I don't think they realize the difference. I think they think every bump is a cyst and don't realize the difference of a ruptured cyst and an abscess or even a cellulitis that can form when that happens and your body's reaction to that broken wall. Um, hello, Wani, Sarah, Jen. Everybody's coming in right now. Very cool. Um, so there's it's a big distinction. I mean, it changes everything. Um, and I did, I did explain it already. That's right. I explained in a video, which makes me think they either watch it with no sound or, you know, they're not really talking about it. But there were a couple things I wanted to make a point on, which I think is really important. Um, a lot of these big ones that you see me post have gone to urgent cares and some of them ERs even, but mostly it's urgent cares. And they turn them away and say, you know, that I can't numb that. That's too big. Or they just make a little tiny poke and they push for a little bit and a little bit of blood comes out, but they're making a small hole and they're like, oh, I, I can't, there's nothing in there. It, it's, it's bigger. You need, you need in a big excision and they send them away and, and they're hurting and they end up at my place. <laughs> and so um, I gladly do it. I've done hundreds and hundreds of these and uh, you know, I, I've never turned one away. So one of the, some of the distinctions that I, I wanted to, to explain why I do what I do. And you'll see me and, and some people talked about, you know, Dr. Sandra Lee, Dr. Pimple Popper never making two cuts. I've seen her do that. I've actually seen a couple of her videos where she did. And there's a couple reasons why I try not to go over a centimeter and a half in my cut. Usually that's all you need to be able to stick something in, break it up, break up loculations and push it out. Every now and then you need to go a little bit bigger. Um, so you want it to drain. And if you do just flay it open, it really opens up because it, it's, there's a lot of pressure underneath and it's a big wide opening and it's going to take forever to granulate in. And a lot of times they get something called proud flesh. Um, and proud flesh is like an overgrowth of this spongy new uh, cellular structure trying to heal, but it ends up impeding the closing uh, of the uh, epidermis in the top of the skin. And, and you can see I left that little tiny bit in, in the middle. And the other reason is because if you cut it all the way open, usually you got to put at least some stitches in to close it, to get it down to where there's just a little opening so it can still close. 
And there's been studies that that uh, some bacteria, we don't know if there's any bacteria in there yet when we culture it, but we didn't get that back, can um, adhere to monofil monofilament, not as much as the braided, but it can adhere to sutures and cause a biofilm. And I, it's something that's synthetic that it's adhering to. So when you give antibiotics, it can almost produce a protective barrier, which is called a biofilm, and it can keep re-inoculating the wound. So does that happen all the time or often? No, but it can happen. And it's like, you already got somebody that, you know, is already hurting. You don't want to suture it all the way closed because it will almost always refill right away within three days. And I've seen people do that and they've come to me and I'm like, oh, we got to cut this wide open. It refilled. Um, so you want that opening. You want it to drain because it's going to take a couple days. Now that you relieve the pressure, a lot of times we'll put on antibiotics that have an anti-inflammatory component to them, like uh, tetracycline, doxycycline. Um, we'll put that on there. And so it drains. And I've showed dozens and dozens of videos like this, and they do very well. I do have his follow-up video coming very soon. I wanted to show you. Um so we don't, I don't like to cut it real wide because then I would have to put sutures in and sutures potentially can harbor bacteria. So I don't like to go that route. Um, I, I keep that little bit of skin in the middle. So it makes it easier. It's less of a gap for the body to have to fill in with granulation tissue and secondary intention healing. So that, that's one thing. Um, the other is people are just like, you didn't get everything out. You never get everything out. Yeah, I know you, you all know that, <laughs> but for people who will come hopefully and see this video, um, they can see that you, when it's mush, it is literally a gelatinous mass under there. And I, I thought it was interesting in this video is when I did start pushing in the, uh, the uh, iodoform gauze into the bottom of the pocket, it actually pushed up some of the, some of the shell of the cyst that came out the small hole at the top. And I pulled it right out the end. That was pretty interesting. Uh, and I, I've seen that before. And I flushed some little bits out as well, um, which was great. Oh my gosh, Sarah, Brian, thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, let me see. The cyst removal is awesome to watch and listen to your explanation. Thank you so much, Ellen. But thank you, Sarah. Every bit helps. I appreciate it. Um, so what happened when uh, I flushed it, you saw little bits and pieces come out and I started pushing in the packing. I had some bigger, uh, bigger bits come out and you, he started to feel, you, you could see, and a lot of people were like, why didn't you give him any extra numbing? Cause I wasn't going to go, I wasn't going back in, you know, at, at the very end when uh, a lot of that, that capsule had kind of, you know, I, I got a lot out. It was kind of closing in a little bit. Um, he was feeling when I was going in there a little bit more down at that bottom. We talk about that acid base shift. I can't just inject into that mush. It's not going to take correctly. It's very acidic because of the inflammation. And it, one, it's hard to even put it in that area Two, It just doesn't, it doesn't take cause it's an acid on an acid. So that, uh, that's a, a, a big point, um, that I, I wanted to make on that. And because I, I saw so many comments, <laughs> I, I know it's people just flying in and flying out. It's not it's not the people like you guys that are always there, but they 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 do write that, and it's interesting. Um, I because it, it's such a common thread, it's such a common thing that they say, and I really wanted to uh, you know put a couple videos out so people will start to see that. Now coming up. Uh, I'm going to do a couple follow-up videos on that big abscess. The big, I did cut it a little wider and I went over two centimeters, which I usually don't do. And it made a pretty good gap and he got proud flesh. So you're going to see how we remove proud flesh and how it heals after you remove the proud flesh. He had a couple follow-ups because this was a big cyst and uh, his pain was almost gone within four days. So he did really well with the pain. Um, and, but you know, the healing took a little bit longer because he did get the proud flesh, the top closed great, the little cut I made, but the bigger one, um, it, it had issues and I'll show that in the next couple of videos, but something that's very cool this last week, I just had somebody come in with a cyst that size, this big guy, big thick skin on his back and a cyst that's about eight centimeters, um, pretty much as big as, the, as that one was. And, uh, we just do a regular excision. And we remove it. It's a ton of content. It closes nice. It healed great. So uh, I, I, I'm I'm really excited to show these two videos kind of in the same month, kind of side by side, same size cyst, 
one is ruptured and you see the inflammation, the blood, the gelatinous, all of that. The other is just a normal big cyst and how much different the procedure is. It's a normal excision. We get a lot out. It squirts all over the place, but it's a normal closure. And it, we clear out the pocket. You can see everything. He doesn't feel anything. Uh, so that's something that's coming very soon, which will be fun. Um, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad I, it's, it's just perfect timing that he came in when he did. So I was like, man, I just did an abscess. This is like six weeks ago. And this one's a perfectly intact cyst. So you'll get to see that dichotomy kind of side by side. Um, so I know I've, I've had people talk about Patreon, Rumble, all these different things because they don't censor. It's just, you know, it's a lot of work to try and build something up to try, you know, we have 300 and I don't know, 25,000 people on here and it, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a lot easier when you've, you've taken two years to build something. It's hard to start all over, but, uh, you know, that I I'm thinking about doing some other things like that, but when you start moving around, people just get lost in the shuffle and we've built like a nice little community here. <laughs> it's been kind of nice. Um, but yeah, so let me see. I'm able to get freezing due infection. Yes, for sure. Susan, a lot of people don't realize that the infected tissue won't freeze. I've had patients in a dental chair, dental chair, unable to get total freezing, freezing being anesthetizing or, or numbing. A lot of people don't understand that. And yeah, that's, that's why I'm out there. That's why I'm throwing out these videos and, and educating. So, um, no, I haven't had anybody. Good question, Sally. I haven't had anybody say, you know, it was really painful the next day or the next day. Um, and one reason is because those pressure sensing nerves are very sensitive and that pressure is building up people. They're like on fire. When you take that pressure down, like a little bit of burning or a cut, you know, a, a little bit of soreness from pressing goes away pretty quickly. But the pressure sensation, like when people get inflamed, that's why cellulitis and abscesses, they're so painful. People can't sleep. They're up all night. They'll do anything. And it's its pretty bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's something that we deal with. And, and I actually infuse like 12 cc's. I, I do quite a bit most of the time in those bigger ones. And I get the whole top, which is where I'm cutting. And the bottom, I can kind of tenderly with a loop extractor or something that's not super sharp. A lot of people ask why I don't do curettes because they're sharp. And sometimes when you get into that gelatinous, very sensitive area on the underside, it bleeds really easily. And you saw that in this in this abscess that we did. Um, and if you hit something that really starts bleeding, you can't really cauterize because you can't numb them. So it, it can become an issue. So that's why I'll do blunt, um, kind of going in there with something blunt and gently scraping and you'll feel, you can, it clicks the loculations. You sometimes can hear it on camera. I'll go through like a membrane and it's like click and, and you can feel it punch through. And then you scrape that thin membrane that is what forms when it blows out and there's different pockets like that, that are called loculations. So, um, you know, that, that was interesting. And so just wanted to, I wanted to pop in, um, Mrs. Pops and I have a date right now. It's just why I got a collar on. <laughs> uh, so we're going out on, we both had today off, which was nice. And we're going to go out on a little lunch date. But I just wanted to uh, come in real quick and tell you guys about the the poker <laughs> in, in, uh, in Vegas and about this abscess that we just did, which was a real exciting one. It's cool. It was on uh, day one of the new year. I, we've got some really good stuff coming. I, I have, I just can't, I'm not getting to them as quickly as I do usually because the kids are just into more things, but I'm still trying to get at least one out a week. I'm sure that's what my goal is. So, um, yeah, it, it's, we, we got a lot of good ones coming. So thank you guys so much for your support and we will, uh, we'll keep this going 2023. I think it's going to be a good one. It should be fun. And I hope you all have a happy, had a happy and safe new year and, uh, that you're all healthy and we will talk again soon. All right. Thanks for popping by. We'll see you.